I think there are two types of being scared in the world. The first type is when you do something wrong, like breaking your mum's favourite vase by accident, and you're scared of her finding out, but at the same time, because she's your mum, you know deep down she won't punish you too horribly, because she knows that accidents happen. But then there's another type of scared. It's when something you never ever thought would happen suddenly does, and the idea of it is so awful that you want to run away. I've only ever felt this type of scared once before, and that was when I saw mum standing in the hospital corridor crying, and I knew right away something bad had happened to my dad. I was feeling that second type of scared again now, and it made me want to be sick all over the floor. I had never thought that the greatest idea in the world would get us into trouble with the police, and I never imagined it would get Ahmet into trouble too. I didn't want him to feel angry at us, but what if he hated us for not telling him our plan, and for the news people knowing about him, even though we hadn't meant them to? Come on, said Josie, putting an arm over my shoulder, and together we all walked in silence up to Mrs Sanders' office. I took a deep breath, and fearing the worst, opened the door. But instead of angry stares and shaking heads, we found everyone smiling at us. Mrs Khan ran up and gave us a hug, and so did Miss Hemsey, and Ahmet looked at us with his wide lion eyes and gave us a small wave. His foster mum was holding her hands to her lips, as if she were praying, and kept saying, You dear children! And there were two police officers standing near the door, but they didn't look angry either and just nodded and smiled at us. Come and sit down, said Mrs Khan, leading us to four chairs that had been squeezed in front of Mrs Sanders' desk. We all sat down. I was still feeling jumpy inside, but at least I wasn't feeling sick anymore. As soon as Mrs Sanders gets back, we want to hear all about what happened yesterday, said Mrs Khan. Miss Hemsey will translate everything for Ahmet and we want you to take your time because it's all very important. But what about first lesson, whispered Michael showing her his watch as it started to flash a blue colour. Just as he held it up, the bell for registration began to ring. Mrs Khan smiled. Don't worry, Miss Stevens is taking the class this morning. We immediately felt sorry for everyone in class. Miss Stevens is learning to be a teacher, but she's so boring and always spends so much time writing on the board that everyone hopes she won't ever really become one. Mrs Sanders came in and squeezing past everyone sat down in her big chair that had a squashed green velvet pillow on it. Right, she said, clapping her hands once. Begin! Slowly at first and then getting faster and faster and faster, we began to talk. We talked about how we became friends with Ahmet and how we wanted to help after finding out about where his mum and dad might be. We talked about hearing that the border gates were going to be shut and all the plans we'd come up with to help. I could see Miss Hemsey explaining everything to Ahmet as we went wide, as we went, and his eyes were getting wider and wider. But it wasn't until I got out my exercise book and showed everyone the greatest idea in the world and the emergency plan that he jumped up from his seat and came to stand next to me. Miss Hemsey had to stand up too as we continued to talk about the letter to the Queen and the presents we were meant to give her, and Stan the taxi man and Davinda the paramedic and the extra extra special Coldstream guards who had given us their word. Nobody asked us any questions, not one. They all just sat and listened and nodded as Miss Hemsey murmured what we were saying in Ahmet's ear. It was strange having so many grown-ups sit and listen as if we were them and they were us, but it felt good. When we had said everything there was to say, Mrs Sanders nodded and put her hands together. Well, she said, leaning back in her chair, I hardly know what to say. She leaned forward and picked up my exercise book with the greatest idea in the world drawn in it, But what I can say is that Ahmet is very, very lucky to have friends who are so passionate about helping him find his family. Now, just to be clear, what you did was extremely dangerous and your plan must never, ever be attempted again. Do you understand? We all nodded silently. I could feel my cheeks getting hot and saw Tom's ears turn bright red. You lied to Mrs Khan, you left school without permission and you put yourselves in great danger. Behaviour like this would usually lead to a temporary suspension from school. Josie gasped and Michael winced. I could hear Tom swallowing nervously and even Ahmet looked scared. Mrs Sanders went on. However, we've spoken with all your parents and I can understand fully that you thought this was an emergency. So in this instance, you will not be suspended. Tom yelped a small yes and Josie let out a huge puff of air that had been making her cheeks swell and Michael gave a long sigh. And as soon as Miss Hemsey had told him what had happened, Ahmet cheered and clapped. But even though I felt happy too, I couldn't feel fully happy because I still wanted to know something. 
And what about Armet's family, miss? Has the Queen found them already? Mrs Sanders shook her head and slowly leaned forward. I think you should all know that the Queen, well, there are some things that even she can't do. But she's the Queen, frowned Tom. She can do whatever she wants. I could see Armet staring at Mrs Sanders as if she wasn't making any sense to him either. But Mrs Sanders was shaking her head. I'm afraid that's not quite true. I'm sure that the Queen would like to try and help Armet in some way, but I doubt very much that she'll be allowed to send out extra people to find his family, especially when no one knows where they are. On hearing Mrs Sanders' words, I felt something hard hit me in the middle of my chest. I wanted to tell her that she was wrong, that the Queen could help anyone if she really wanted to, but even though my mouth opened, it couldn't say any words. I know that may come as a huge disappointment, said Mrs Sanders. But Ahmet has lots of people trying to help him find his parents, though even if they do find them, it may take a long time, months, maybe even years before they can join him here. That's why he's staying with Miss York for now, she added, nodding at Ahmet's foster mum. We all stayed silent, and even though I didn't want them to, I could feel my eyes beginning to get wet and my nose tickling and something heavy sinking in the pit of my stomach. Everything we had done had been for nothing. And the greatest idea in the world was really the stupidest idea in the world. In fact, probably the stupidest idea, stupidest idea in the whole universe. And I knew that everyone was thinking it too. Now, said Mrs Sanders, I want to show you something. She took a newspaper from out of her bag and laid it on the desk in front of us. I looked over at Michael and Tom and Josie, but I think they must have all forgotten about the promise we made because they immediately started to read the paper. So I wiped my eyes and looked at it too. I knew that it had to be okay to break a promise to your mum if your head teacher was telling you to. A huge headline stared up at us from the front page and alongside it was a large blurry image of me running up to one of the Queen's guards with Tom behind me. I could tell it was me because of my bright blue rucksack but I couldn't see my face properly at all. The paper looked like this. The story said that the newspaper was going to run an international appeal to find Ahmet's parents, which made Josie grin and whisper, See? This is what it said. Yesterday afternoon saw a centuries-old tradition in disarray when the changing of the guard ceremony was disrupted by two nine-year-old children. Breaking through the barriers, they attempted to give one of Her Majesty's palace guards a written note, asking the Queen to help them find the family of a refugee boy known only as Ahmet. The decisive actions of these children have served to remind us all of the shameful hesitancy and fear which often govern our actions and those of our government. So who is Ahmet and where is his family? This paper is determined to help and urges our readers, leaders and politicians to do what they can to not only find this young boy's missing family, but reunite them here on British soil. Perhaps it is the actions of these children which will inspire political bodies across the world to finally heed the plight of refugee children everywhere. A fitting testament indeed to a young boy whose story we have yet to learn, made infamous by a daring act of true friendship. We appeal to all of you to not let the brave actions of these children be in vain. Help us find Ahmet's family. After she had finished, Mrs Khan put the paper down and looked at us with her eyebrows raised. So you see... All is not lost. Even if the Queen can't do as much as she'd like to, there's a whole world of people who are whispering Ahmet's name and trying to think of how to help instead. Later that morning, as I sat in lessons, I thought about what Mrs Sanders had said. I thought about the worldwide whispers being whispered right now at that very moment and wondered how long it would take for all of them to reach the border gate people and Ahmet's mum and dad too. I had never thought about how loud a whisper can be if there are lots and lots of them. So all that day, I whispered, help Ahmet, out loud too, whenever I could. So did Tom and Michael and Josie. And whenever we did it together, our whispers made a sound like an ocean. <laughs>